Welcome, everyone. My name is Camden Starley. I am an associate with Global Awakening, and I'm here with uh, Mike and Dina Van Tal, the amazing Mike and Dina. Uh, I'm so excited to have a conversation with them today. Uh, Mike is the director of the Apostolic Network of Global Awakening, mm -hmm. and Dina is the future director of Global School of Supernatural Ministry. So excited. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Oh, We're excited course. to be here. Yeah. You guys have just recently moved to Pennsylvania. Uh, like in December, I think, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, so we're so happy that they're here, that they're up in Pennsylvania with us, uh, just further getting integrated into the global community. And um, I wanted to have a conversation with them today around uh, financial miracles and around generosity. And um, for me, honestly, as I've been praying about this area in my own life, I've just felt the Lord addressing things in my heart in the area of trusting him uh, to provide and believing him uh, to just experience breakthrough um, in, in provision and uh, in generosity. And I just know that Mike and Dina have had a wealth of experience in this area. Uh, for those of you that may or may not know, they were missionaries in China for a number of years, but also have just responded to the call of a life of faith in trusting the Lord and intimacy with Jesus and, and following him. And I'm just excited to hear them talk about their experience uh, in this area. So thank you guys both so much for joining me. Thank you. It's a joy. Look forward to yes, it. yeah. So uh, as we start off, I would just love if you guys could share about um, how you really began this journey with the Lord. Uh, I know that this wasn't something you just grew up with, this mindset, <laughs> and you've had a number of encounters with the Holy Spirit where God really set you on a trajectory and God began to teach you more about this area of trusting him to provide. So mm. if you could just share some about your journey and how the Lord began to uh, lead you in this. Yes. Well, I'd say the start of a life of financial miracles started with our radical encounter with the Lord, January 20th of 2000. And when we were so just captivated by his heart and mm. who, he, uh, he, who he is and you yeah. know, his love for us, it changed everything about how we looked at life. And honestly, before we were pretty selfish people, just caring <laughs> about our own needs, to be honest. Yeah. But from that encounter with him, and like you said, the, the trajectory of our life completely changed. We just began to see him differently and see the needs of people around us so differently. Mm. And so we just began to learn his voice and, and follow him and take steps one step after another and before long it looked like just radical obedience and just following his voice and then came generosity and all that we learned in that and through all that became a trust in him and you mm -hmm. mentioned that word trust and and that's key and we'll talk more about that as we go but so our faith journey for financial miracles you know for me i look back and yeah it's just that the move of the spirit upon our life to open us up to a new way of living life and looking at the needs around us and learning the goodness of God and, and how he wanted us to live. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I can imagine, like, I know some of your story just because I've heard it and know you mm -hmm. all, but because you were, were you the president of a bank? Vice president. Vice president. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I can only imagine like being in that type of position and having a certain way of thinking about finances. Right. Um, which I, I'm sure you all would agree, it's not wrong to have wisdom, to have those mm -hmm. skills, understanding. But I can only imagine in being invited into this laying down and faith journey, how much of a transformation mm -hmm. must have happened in, in your mind in that process. Right. So yeah. that, that was a big step for me. You know, yeah. <laughs> when, when the Lord touched <laughs> us and we made some steps, you know, it seemed like it was a little bit easier for Dean at times just to have trust and faith. She was right there. But my yeah. mindset... You know, through my education, I was trained to look at the bottom line, do what makes sense. Right. And then also you know, the Christian upbringing to live within your means and, and use budgets. Right. And not that those principles, you know, are wrong in itself. Yeah. But as we grew in relationship with the Lord and he started to teach us through relationship how he was leading us to do life personally and in ministry, mm. following his voice and his leading man that was such a better way but yeah it took 
his grace to, to, you know, let go of the budgets and trust him to say, okay, if he says empty the bank account, we can trust that he knows what he's doing. And you empty it out, give it away, knowing that he has a plan. And so, yeah, just began to, to really shift things in us when we realized, you know, the principles are there when we don't hear his voice. Mm-hmm. But when we would, you know, know it was him and we could lean into that, that's when we started to really see breakthrough and miracles. Yeah. What was one of the first times that God really challenged you all in that? Mm. I think um, it was our third missions trip. Mm -hmm. And by then, we um, had already stepped down from our jobs, and we were working at a local church. And so we went from having a good amount of income to a, a small income. In mm-hmm. fact, I wasn't working at all. I was mm-hmm. at home with the children then at that time, and, and uh, Mike was on staff being paid at the church. And, How old were your kids? Um, at that time, I think they were th- uh, maybe four and one. Mm, um, so we really only young. had Yeah, we only had yeah. two at that point. <laughs> and, um, and I remember the, the invitation to go to Africa, Mm. And so that trip for three, three and a half weeks for two people was quite a large sum of money. Um, yeah. And I remember my, my parents are, are pretty well off. Um, my dad wasn't raised or wasn't born that way uh, with a wealthy family, but he, he worked his way up and um, made a, quite a business for himself. And so they, they had... Um, they had a bit of money themselves and Mm -hmm. and I remember during this time and they had always been generous with us they had always taught both of our parents had always taught us about um giving and tithes and offerings and we were we were raised that way but um when this trip came up we didn't have any of the money and so we started asking the Lord what does this look like? You know, does it look mm-hmm. like raising money, sending out letters and asking my parents, you know? And at that point, I distinctly remember the Lord said that our parents weren't our providers anymore, that he was to be our provider. And so we talked about that and prayed about like what he said, what we felt he said. And then we just started asking him, okay, what does that look like? How, how does mm-hmm. that work? And um, I remember us realizing that we had we had this house that we were living in, and that we we really didn't feel right about asking people for money while we still had belongings or things that we could use or sell or mm-hmm. and it might seem radical or weird, I don't know, but we just thought to ourselves, well, we have this house we were living in the same house before mike had stepped into this new position so it's a nice house Mm -hmm. we had we had this house and um we just kind of thought to ourselves we could sell the house and um and the money that we made from the house would well pay for you know um the the trip to africa and it was interesting at this time it didn't seem radical it seemed it seemed like it made sense like we we had this that he had provided for us Mm -hmm. and so if we gave it that um that that would be a good thing and so remember we we decided to do this and my dad found out that we were doing that and he was angry um he just uh, by that time he had said dina you guys have already given everything you know like we gave the jobs that we had, you know, we had quite a bit of education and and all the time and money that that, that took. And he just said, what, what are you doing? The house is the only thing you have left, you know, mm-hmm. and you're selling it to go to Africa for three weeks. It, in the natural, it didn't make sense. And, right. and we just said, it was just, we just said, well, it's what we have. And mm-hmm. it was joyful to give it. And so, put our house on the market and it immediately sold mm. uh, by the time that we needed the money to go to Africa and so we we used that money for the trip and 
And it was like every step that he had asked us to take, what we got back spiritually was so profound. And so we went on this trip and we bought a, a little bitty house, you know, with the, the money that, that was left over. So we bought a small house and we went on this trip. And on this trip was where we got the the impartation for the spirit of adoption. And, mm. and that spirit of adoption led to us adopting our daughter and that adopting our daughter led us to going to China and going to China led us to working with the government and helping, you know, all of these children and um, leading many people to the Lord and working with the underground church. So it was like these these things that were sacrifices actually led to the, the greatest reward mm-hmm. of people and souls and the, the things of the Lord that... Um, it became kind of a no-brainer for us. Every time we, we right. would give something radically to the Lord, he would give back to us. He would always provide for our needs, but mm. then he would give back to us people and, mm. um, yeah, and, and relationship with him. And every time he then in turn provided for us in a time of need, it just was like it brought us so much closer to him as a father because that's what fathers do they provide and so right. that was probably the first of like a real um not, i don't even want to say a test of our faith but just an invitation and you really don't have to worry about anything but you you can use what you have and it's more than enough like what he's already provided for us is more than enough to give him so that he can multiply mm-hmm. back. Yeah. We're just so in love with Jesus that yeah. these were offerings that seemed almost insignificant compared to how much he loved us. We were like, mm-hmm. you know, we can do this, but Lord, this is all we have. You're loving us so much, you know. Mm-hmm. And so looking back, yeah, it was little offerings, but we did what we could, and he honored it. Yeah. He'll mm-hmm. honor every offering we give him. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and I don't know, uh, just to kind of backtrack a bit, because some people may not be aware, but you guys had your first experience with the uh, impartation encounter with the Holy Spirit was at Dr. Tom Jones Church. Um, right. And what year was that? 2000. 2000. Okay. January 20th. So that was when you like first had transformation, right. encounter with the right. Lord, encounter with his love. And right. then when you went to Africa, how much longer after that? It was September? another two, two years two before, years. yeah, mm-hmm. before we moved okay. to yeah. China, yeah, and um, and with that too, it was, um, you know, we just decided to give everything that we had away. Yeah. Um, we sold our house as we still had a mortgage on our house, and so we sold the house but just gave everything else away. I mean, we could only take two suitcases anyways. Mm. And so, um, and I remember that, you know, event very, very um, vividly, you know, sitting in my living room and we invited friends and family Mm -hmm. over to just come through our home and take what they wanted. And I remember, you know, my friends trying on my shoes and trying on my dresses and, I remember putting rings on people's fingers and I was sitting back in a chair and just kind of watching all these people go through our books and you know and like just different things and it felt very much like a funeral like in yeah. a, in a very good way it was like I was getting a sneak peek at what it would look like if I if I died and and mm. um but with everything that we were giving away it was like I would look at that thing and somebody put it in a bag or whatever and think it didn't feel sad. It felt free. I felt like, oh my goodness, I don't have to worry about that particular thing. I could do anything. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about where this is going to go or how I'm going to take care of this or whatever. It was just by the end, everything was gone and it was like nothing was holding us back. Mm. And it was um, very freeing. It was, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It was very freeing, and and um, it was wonderful. And so we bought a one-way ticket 
mm-hmm. to China with our three kids then at that time and ended up in, you know, this this um, apartment that was full of raw sewage and that we were on the first floor of mm-hmm. an eight story apartment building. And so all of the raw sewage from the whole building would back up into our apartment and I have wow. pictures of Mike holding, you know, buckets of sewage. Sewage. Wow. Yeah. And um so and it had rats and it was, you know, like it was it was so far from where we had been. Yes. And um and at that point I remember like it it, it did hit me like, oh my goodness, like you know, like watching my children go from having more than enough and then watching them in this environment it was like oh my goodness what what have we done you know like Mm -hmm. this is this is really real yeah um and so the the sacrificial part was there but then every time we would process that and just pray and just say god you know like um (laughs) what do we do uh he would always just meet us with um, an opportunity to serve him, and then ways that he would provide so that we could do, we could do those things. And it was just like money just wasn't holding us back. It wasn't. Right. It it wasn't that you know like we we're not aware that things cost money. It was just that he was developing this relationship with us that whenever he asked us to do something, we didn't have to worry about money. Like mm. all we needed to think about was obeying him or accepting an invitation into whatever like that that was the only thing that we needed to be concerned about and so he was doing that through a a process of Mm -hmm. of experiences Mm. yeah that's amazing um and i'd love to talk with you guys some about radical generosity but before i do that too just in hearing your story and the things you all went through like I'd love for you to share some about common fears you feel like people have that are holding them back from really being able to step into that. Because I feel like, you know, just as you've been sharing, where we really are in a posture of God meeting our needs, you know, really believing that the Lord's going to meet our needs. And I felt God challenging me personally in that more, you know, of, you know, Paul talks about like he knows how to have a lot and he knows how to be okay with having little. He's content in both. And I believe that that's something God has for us as believers, but there's so often uh, fears that we have that hold us back from really being able to trust God. And um, and mm-hmm. in you guys' experience of just kind of being led by the Lord in each step, like what are some different things that you feel like mm-hmm. are hindering people commonly or common fears or maybe fears that you felt like God addressed in your heart in that time where you realize, oh, God, I didn't know that I was doubting this aspect of who you are, your nature. Mm-hmm if that makes sense. Sure. I yeah. mean, the fear of lack is, is real for yeah. a lot of people. I mean, you're looking at what's in the bank account, what I can do in of myself. And, yeah. And so you're like, well, this just really doesn't make sense. Right. But in, in God's economy, in, in relationship with him, you know, everything changes to where, you know, you have to understand he has much higher ways than what's limited by, you know, our natural means. And so once we can overcome that fear of well what I can do with him is limited to my resources mm-hmm. and just overcome that fear of you know running out or not having enough mm. but trusting in him you know that's kind of the first hurdle and then just keep stepping out you know one one step after another knowing that you can trust him because we we took several steps where we're like we don't know how this is going to happen, but we've heard mm. his voice and we trust him. We were just sharing earlier about a testimony in our adoption process it was one of the first big challenges for me to believe for financial miracles. And it was a walk by faith. We were determined not to ask for money or fundraise, but we needed thousands and tens of thousands of dollars. $30,000. And mm. it was, you know, yeah, a first big step for me in that way. And at one point, you know, there was an installment due and we remember writing out a check knowing that there's not the money in the account we didn't to, have to any, clear this check i remember that we didn't have mm. any money in that the savings account but we wow. wrote the check that. in faith and we prayed over it 
and went to send the check and and within 24 hours you know we were met with the the same dollar amount that was on the check somebody gave us and wow so it was just yeah a start of knowing hey this is how you can trust god and and partner with him right and so yeah just overcoming that first fear of being limited to what you have right and and just trusting him i think that's that's one thing that's a start Mm -hmm. i remember when we we were in china for just three months and we had to every three months we had to go leave the country with our three children so the five of us we had to leave country for visas and then you could come back in so we would go to hong kong to renew our visas and then come back into mainland China every three months. Mm. And so just even that in itself, the expense of travel when, I mean, there's, when there's nothing. And so um, this was the first time doing that. And we didn't know anything about the difference between Hong Kong and mainland China. And so Mm. um, we, we were told at that time not to carry cash with us, not a lot of cash, just enough to get us to a hotel because of theft that was going on in, in both countries. And um, and that when we got into Hong Kong to go to the bank and to go, go to an ATM and to pull out the money that we needed for our visas and for the hotel and food mm. and everything like that. And so we did that and we took about 400 renminbi in cash with us and got to the airport in Hong Kong and went to take a taxi from the airport to the hotel. And we didn't realize that Hong Kong at that time was the fourth most expensive city in the world. And so the difference Mm -hmm. between mainland China and Hong Kong was astronomical, even as far as taxi. So we get out of the taxi and he said, that'll be 400 renminbi. It was everything that we had. And so we paid the taxi driver went into the hotel and in the hotels you can't use visas you can only use a bank of china card well we didn't have a bank of china card and so um mike they they let us check into the room we had already made reservations so they let us check into the room and they just said well you have to pay up front um mike said i'm going to the bank and i'll be right back and so he went to the bank and realized that all the banks were closed because it was national holiday. So the banks were closed for a week. A week? A week. And so (laughs) then they, um, he went to the ATM and the ATMs were all shut down because they were having major credit card theft where people were stealing credit cards in the ATM. So they shut those down. It's like everything that could go wrong was going wrong. So we had (laughs) no money, not one renminbi. Yeah. And we had three kids. Now it's getting late they're hungry they're thirsty and Mike goes in to tell the the hotel staff and they followed him up to the room where I was with the kids and they said you have 24 hours they locked the mini bar so we couldn't get water or <laughs> and you can't drink water in China you can't drink from the faucet you have to have a bottle of water. you have to have bottles of water and so mm. the kids are you know my daughter was one and a half just a baby and five and eight and so Mike goes for a walk and to pray and I go in the bathroom to cry because I didn't want the children to see me or, or to be afraid mm. um, and so uh, and we both started praying and uh, Mike uh, found a little bookstore and it was a Christian bookstore and the owners of the bookstore were actually friends of Heidi and Roland Baker okay and so they asked him what was going on and he shared that Mm -hmm. and um uh what what had happened so of course they were you know these amazing christians and they gave us money to buy visas and they actually upgraded our hotel and they Uh you know gave us you know they the lord used them to provide all of that but before we left the the woman gave us a book and it was about disabled children now Mm. people think that we went to china to take to open an orphanage and take care of orphan children we didn't we went Mm. to china because we heard the lord say go to china Mm. we didn't have a plan we Mm -hmm. were just trying to follow his voice and so yeah she's now she's got this book and she's giving us this book and she said i believe this is why you're here and this is kind of what I want to piece together, the money and the call. Every time 
the Lord asked us to do something or put us in the situation where where money was was uh, something that we needed to have faith with when we walked through that thing was the door opening to the next thing that he was calling us to and so I we were so amazed at, at if we hadn't have walked through this with the finances we wouldn't have gotten the book the book after we read the book mm. we knew that he was inviting us into caring for children in dying rooms children with mm. severe special needs it wasn't something that had been on our heart before but as we read this book we could feel him inviting us into that mm. as soon as we flew back into mainland china we get a call from three women who had found this baby that was abandoned on a mountain road and mm. everyone knew that children that were abandoned on the mountain road that that the reason that people did that was so that they were eaten by animals mm. so these three women found this baby and they heard the audible voice of the Lord say do not let him die his life is important wow so they were trying to figure out how to feed this baby and what to do they went to three different orphanages and no orphanage would take him because he was so severe he was dying and he had so many special needs and they just were like just let him die mm. and so um here we were in hong kong doing this and learning how to trust the lord here before this time i could not have only paid for our hotel room i could have paid for years too mm -hmm. money wasn't an issue i know i could have we could have blessed our own children and blessed yours too and now we're in the situation where Right. We have nothing, and it's and it's humiliating. You know, they're yeah. locking a mini bar, but it was so good for me. Mm. We were learning a whole different set of values. Right. So we fly back into mainland China, and we get this call, and will you take this baby? How would we have known to take the baby if we hadn't gotten the book? Right. And so I remember them bringing this, you know, bringing this baby, which was the beginning of the call to these dying children, which we got to take hundreds of them. Mm. But he used finances to do something that was so profoundly important to rescue a dying child. And we saw that happen time and time and time again. It like set us up for purity of heart almost, where if we would trust him with this, then he could trust us with this and and it was a glorious walk with the Lord mm -hmm. um, that we would we would never want to do another way it also like it really set us up to trust him and not even trust stories like like about like to to um, raise money let's let's take that you know like to send out letters to raise money you can imagine how much money it cost over the years to have a house where we had an ICU where we took care of the sickest of the sickest babies where yeah. they needed to be in hospitals and we needed to start schools and we had a hundred staff and all of the things that you would need hundreds of thousands and you know millions of dollars over the years that we would right. that we would need and um and i'm sorry i forgot where i was going with that well yeah. it was steps which really was interesting in that in the beginning you know if we had faith for five thousand dollars we'd be set for the month and then you know as he'd present the needs for these children and we would take in more and more which meant more staff, more food, more expenses, and he would grow our faith incrementally. Mm. And so it just was, yeah, one step after another that way to where we started to realize, well, he did so many miracles before, surely he's going to do it again. Right. And so then we Growing could believe for tens and twenties of thousands every month. And, mm. you know, he would just come through time and time again. Wow. And what I loved during that time is that it wasn't just growing our faith, but then we were modeling it. Like Dina said, we had 100 staff that we were discipling and, and showing what trust in God and generosity looked like. And so they were learning his ways and following our example, and they became generous themselves and, mm. and to the point where, as a community, we felt like we could meet 
each other's needs. We had enough confidence in God and the love that we had for each other that any need that would come up, that we could take care of each other. Mm. And it was a beautiful way to live and, and see them just grow in radical generosity themselves to where some were were poor, but just with what little income they would gather together, they would bless us. Mm. Many times just bless us to go back to the U.S. or to do a trip or just for our birthdays and, mm. and just radical generosity that they grew in themselves. So that was a joy to to see that yeah, come to pass beautiful. too. And our relationships, I remembered what I was going to say, is like our, our relationships with other people instead of like needing to come up with a story, you know, mm. about the need, you know, like, oh, well, this we need money for this surgery or or whatever and let me tell you the story of this child so that i could raise money all of our relationships had this purity to them mm -hmm. because i never told you a story because i needed something for, from you i told mm -hmm. you a story that was birthed out of the holy spirit's like desire for you to know something or for me to share something with you mm -hmm. and but it was there was never any string attached to any testimony and we just so loved what it did with our relationships with people when we would come home to the states um, on furlough we didn't have to go to churches we went to churches and we told about god but we would always say you don't need to to take up an offering for us like um you know if you want to then then you know we're not going to turn it down but it was there was there was never like this need to to um manipulate to, or use uh, right. the relationship Heidi mm -hmm. Roland Baker really taught us a, a lesson in that and it was like no one was ever uh, concerned about being in our presence you know or mm. like or the reason that that we would be sharing anything mm -hmm. you know with them it was just it was it kept things so clean and so pure mm -hmm. um and I wanted to tell you a story about um, a, about a time where God really met a need, and we we had um, a need for a car. And usually, when there was, and this was in China, mm. and we had been there for a while, and we needed we had one vehicle, um, one van for the children, and then we needed another vehicle because there was one vehicle for like at that time maybe fifty staff. Like oh, we had lot. one vehicle, yeah. and so we needed. Was it like a big car or like it, it was, was a, van. Like a, a van? Okay, it was a small van. van. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so <laughs> we, every time we needed something, we would fast and pray, and we would just we wouldn't put that burden on other people unless the Lord asked us to share with yeah. somebody to pray. But we would just we would just go to our Father and say we we need this, and so we had been asking just Him for a car, mm. and this one day. Um, it was getting late, and I was exhausted. I had been taking care of kids all day, and, yeah. and it was intense. And this Chinese couple called and asked if they could come and come to our house, and they wanted to spend time with us. And it was the last thing. I was just tired. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Lord, Lord, what should I do? And he said, Dina, I want you to be a woman of hospitality. I want, I want, I want you to learn how to do this even when you're tired, and I want it to be genuine. Mm -hmm. And so I just went into him to find that and and so we said yes you know come to our house and you can you know share a meal with us and sit in our living room and so they did and the woman was nine months pregnant mm -hmm. and she told us the story about how she had had a dream about a place called hidden treasure she didn't know what it was our ministry in china mm -hmm. was called hidden treasures mm -hmm. and so she had this dream about hidden treasures and um and she said that she she just thought it was a dream. And that day she went to a bank. And at the bank, a sister, a, another Christian, Chinese Christian, was standing behind her. And she turned around and they were talking. And she said, oh, I had this dream last night. And it was about this place called Hidden Treasures. And the lady said, that's a real place that these foreigners run this this facility and it's mm. a it's a home for children and she said i have to go and meet them and so she's that's when they called and asked if her and her husband could come and meet and mm. so she's sharing this dream this dream with us i had a dream about this place and in the dream i knew that they needed a car and she mm. said in the dream i gave them my car and she said, as soon as at the bank, and they had a lot of money, this couple was very wealthy. And she said, when um, 
the sister behind me said, this is a real place and this is what they do. She said, I knew that I had to come. And as she's saying this, she's nine months pregnant, she reaches in her pocket and she hands us the keys to this little red Kia. She hands us the key to this car and, you know, I start crying and, you know, wow. I start to tell her, you have no idea, you know, how much our family needed mm-hmm. this so that we could even use it for, for our family. And, and we just started sharing with her how, you know, important that was and how we had just fasted and prayed and asked God and she was the answer. Well, she was so moved because she had never really felt like she had heard God's voice before. Mm. And so what that did, that sh- that the Lord spoke to her about something that was real, and she got to come and do something for orphans and for this, mm. co- you know, that was really real. It it did something in her relationship with God. It, mm. like, ignited a fire in her. And so um, she uh, asked if her and her husband could begin volunteering at our facility and so they did and they came faithfully Mm -hmm. and they fell in love with the children and she particularly had this this love for one of the little girls that we had that didn't have an arm and a hand and a leg Mm -hmm. and she just got really close to this little girl well when it was time for her to give birth which was a couple of weeks after that they flew to australia they wanted their child to be born in Australia. They flew to Australia, and they had uh, this baby, and their baby was born without an arm. Mm. And she said, she called us, and she said, if, that had, if, if I had had this child and I hadn't had this experience at Hidden Treasures, she said, my family has been pressuring me to abandon our baby because you don't wow. have a child with disabilities, and especially in the circles that they ran in but she said mm-hmm. there was not a question in my husband and I that we should keep this baby and and we just thought to ourselves what if we had put out a letter <laughs> and what if we had done you know things the traditional way to raise money t- for the ve- for this vehicle this woman wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to hear god solidify her relationship with the Lord, then she wouldn't have had the opportunity to experience God's love and how he loves these children. And that changed her heart. Right. And then what if she had had this child and hadn't had that? If we hadn't trusted God, mm-hmm. it could have thwarted a whole list of things that God wanted to do in this other person's life. So our need was met her need was met it was just this and we saw that happen over and over again it was so not about money yeah it was so much more about the treasure of people's hearts and what god wanted to do for people that would just trust him as father it was so it was so much more and it's continued to be so much Mm -hmm. more than that yeah that that reminds me of your question you know what hinders people from financial miracles yeah fear of lack is one you know, limiting it to what we have. But I think like what Dino was talking about, when you look at people instead of God, you know, for your source, that, right. that can get a lot of people off because, you know, there's opportunities, you know, people of wealth or, or means that could be the answer. Right. But ultimately we just kept our eyes on the Lord and kept our relationships pure and, and just just love people for who they were and, and like Dina said not try to use a story or use anything and he would provide and, and then the other blessings would come so I think and then like hearing yeah. his voice like you know we heard I want you to be a woman of hospitality right and so like obeying that mm-hmm. and then what that even just that message of being a woman of hospitality has meant for my entire like it became who I was of, yeah it, it, and it was really important in what we did because half of our ministry started being to visitors from all over China that were curious about hmm. what we were doing and we got to lead so many people to the Lord by opening hmm. our home and all the the orphanage and sitting with people and and learning that no I can I can really like give my life and then what how the lord would would bring people t- into his heart by mm. by a simple thing like being hus- hospitable yeah. right and then yeah. all of those people that would come to our home and see all of these children so many staff 
It, the number one question with all these visitors <laughs> was, well, how do you pay for all this? This pay? sure has got to be expensive. And so we were able to testify to the Chinese nationals, you know, that we have a God that provides. I remember this one. And we just pray, and he answers prayers. He literally has relationship with us, with us as we talk to him. Right. He'll tell us, you know, how he's going to do it and, you know, how many children to take and what to do and, and that he will provide that way. And mm. so we were able to testify over and over again as people would come and ask that question. Yeah. Mm. And I remember this one time, this um, older Chinese gentleman, he was a business person, and he had just taken a, a tour, and, and you could see how much money everything cost. You know, the, the facility, we had 11 buildings, and the facility that he was in was five stories, and it had we had a school, and you know, all of that, and he was like, I can't wrap my mind, he was not a believer, I can't wrap mm. my mind around finances, and so we're just sharing testimonies of all these things, and how God, how we just pray and trust God, and he's our Father and how he provides and he's trying to wrap his mind around it and he can't and all of a sudden this guy walks through our office door and he's from Guangzhou another province away he's from Guangzhou and he's got a backpack on and he takes off his backpack and he uns now this is unprecedented in, in the Chinese culture because they wouldn't burst in that it would be rude. They wouldn't mm -hmm. burst into a meeting, you know. Um, and so he bursts through the door, takes off the backpack, unzips the backpack, and dumps out a pile of money uh, wow. of like this high. And we needed like 20,000 renminbi mm -hmm. for an addition that we were doing. And mm -hmm. we had just prayed. And he just dumps it. He said, the Lord spoke to me to come immediately. He took a train, like, how many wow. hours it was yeah, three, and he dumps hours. dumps out this money and shall you and i my assistant we just start crying and he, and he looks at us and he looks at the money and he's like is this what you're talking <laughs> about and we were like yes and he gave his life to the lord wow and so yeah it just it would happen over and mm -hmm. over it was fun and, and it was healthy because right. we were depending on him yes. for everything and we would grow in our relationship as he supplied need after need. And, and it wasn't just finances, but we'd depend on him for our children's education, you know, for resources, Braces. buildings, <laughs> practical things, and everything he would take care of. Yeah. And so it was just a great adventure. Yeah, yeah. that was one thing I was going to say is I love how healthy that is and how mm -hmm. it wasn't like just something you were trying to manufacture thought okay this is how god's gonna move and this is how it is um or even some of the unhealthy ways we see people are in the church where they are you know uh seeing people for what they can provide like you all were talking about you know mm -hmm. and that's not healthy and it's not what god right. wants for us you know and so i just love the health that's there and that it really is about following the voice of god and being mm -hmm. obedient to him and how he's leading you um and one thing I know uh, we're getting close to wrapping up, but uh, I was just thinking, because some people, when you hear about being led by God, they think it's always a booming voice. But my assumption would be probably most of the time it was pretty faint yeah. as you guys are hearing from God. Yeah, for sure. Most times it was just a, a little nudge mm -hmm. or, you know, an invitation that we could have easily missed. Yeah. But we would lean into it and, and feel like it was his heart. And, and most times, you know, it was about giving or serving, of course. Right. But especially in the area of vulnerable children, any time that it was even a whisper of God and we would lean in and just trust that it was him, yeah, for sure, we would realize he was behind that because it wasn't our best intentions. It was him. Yeah. You know, and his voice. And, and it was, yeah, just small whispers that became just huge breakthroughs to see lives changed. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, I think we also like you know you can make a lot of things happen like when you need facilities or whatever uh, you know like you can make things happen before their time. And one of the things that I really right. learned was that he always has perfect timing. So if you don't have something, there's usually a reason that mm. you don't have something. But if you yeah. if you'll trust him and you'll press in, like you know that the, the the Chinese government is a whole nother story I won't get into because we don't have time but you know like we needed another building and but we weren't ready for another building for 
years. But when we were ready, when the time was right, the Chinese government came to us and they were like, we want we want to give you this and and without mm. one without you know uh one what do you call it when you raise money when you fundraiser yeah without one fundraiser <laughs> or you know the the <laughs> column that you put up and you mark the red places where you you know have this much money or that much not not right. one bit of that when the time was right when we were ready when we were ready only god knows that right. i can make a building happen yeah, I'm I'm pretty smart, and I I know how to, you know I know how like I could You're capable. Yeah, but we could make a building happen. We and we could we could um, uh, borrow money. You know, there's lots of things that you could do, but God knew when our character was ready. Right. He knew when our kids were ready for more. When our family, when our marriage could withstand the weight of more. And when mm-hmm. he did it, he just did it. He just gifted us a building. Yeah. 45,000 square feet. You know, he just, when we were ready for things, he knew how to do it. And that trust in him, too. I think, I think sometimes we get in trouble when we, when we have a, a dream and we just think because we had the dream, now's the time. Right. But God really knows how to give you the desires of your heart in due season at right. the right time and it's always perfect and that's why the weight of the ministry never crushed us it actually mm-hmm. we were built up and, and our marriage got stronger every time and our kids got stronger every time and so i say good. too it, it was interesting that it came in so many different ways yeah mm-hmm. it's how he would provide and that's good too because if we're not careful we can make it into a pattern and just right. assume oh God provided this way before, so this is how he does it. <laughs> you know, he would always change things up mm-hmm. on us and yeah. kept us dependent, and we saw him provide, yeah, just numerous ways. And so mm. that was something we learned, too, is it's not a formula mm-hmm. or a pattern to success. It's just relationship. And that the waiting is really good. Mm-hmm. Like waiting on the Lord is really good. Mm-hmm. Getting strong, renewing your strength all of those those times are they're so purposeful and meaningful mm. and and he uses it for your good when when it's just a trust a trust in a good father right right so. yeah that's so beautiful <laughs> um and i would just love to have you guys like as we're closing pray and and i feel like too just what you all were really hitting on there at the end about not relying on our own strength and I feel like I know I struggle with that, especially if you're someone that's capable, you're someone mm-hmm. that can build something on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's certainly something that is emphasized in American culture. Mm-hmm. You can just build things on your own and grind it out. And um, and there can be a temptation from, you know, the enemy or just getting into our flesh. And we see that in the life of Abraham, you know, wanting to make the promise come to pass. And it's not necessarily from a bad intent in your heart. You know, you just really want to partner with God, but you're not necessarily waiting upon him and following Mm -hmm. his leadership. Um, So I would just love for you guys to pray as you feel led into that for people that may be watching that are in a place of, of trying to follow God Maybe they're feeling like I'm trying to do things in my own strength and I know the Lord doesn't want me to do that. Um, Or they're just believing the Lord for provision and they feel God inviting them to step out in faith. Uh, Any of those areas, it would be great if you guys could just minister and pray. For sure. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Well, Father, we, we thank you that you are a good God and you know how to provide for us. And so we pray a, a special grace would come on those that would watch this a grace to give and a grace to go after you and your voice and how you would lead them in the life of financial miracles and just radical generosity whatever that looks like for them holy spirit you know that person and so would you just lead them by your voice and by promptings and i pray a grace to step out and trust you and just grow in a relationship with you yeah, we also just do, um, we break off cultural norms, yeah. things that are holding us back, things that mm-hmm. we've just been taught that don't necessarily represent who God is and 
and how he works and the way that he moves. So we we break we break off anything like that because it just holds us back. And so Father, would you just release a new paradigm? Would you release a a a mind that thinks like you do and a heart that moves to the sound of your voice? I pray that every bit of fear would be bound in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of fear coming against, um, really coming against trust in the name of Jesus, that fear is fighting trust of a father who provides all of our needs according to his riches. I also break off fear for um, just being afraid of lack and and not learning how to be content in all circumstances, that if you're in a circumstance where you're learning how to be content with little, I bless that in the name of Jesus. I bless Mm -hmm. that part of the process where you're learning contentment, not only in answered prayers, but in the waiting in the name of Jesus. I bless the character that the Lord is building the character that he's building up, the timing that only a good father knows. I bless the, the, the things that he knows about the strength that you need for what he wants to give you, the, the increase, the multiplication. I bless that, that ease in your heart, the rest, the Sabbath rest in the name of Jesus. That's good. That's building endurance. It's building character. It's, it's, it's um, releasing miracles in other people's lives. I bless the good things that the world would call evil. Mm-hmm. And I bind the evil things that the world would call good. Mm-hmm. I bless the kingdom things in, yes. in each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. And I speak now and I pray into that miracle that you need. I bless the Lord to provide all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And at due season, in the very, very, very perfect time that he would unzipper heaven and release blessings so big that you wouldn't have room to contain it. I bless your finances. I bless the things that that you're of need of to be met by a father in heaven, the father of lights in every perfect and good way that he does that. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank yeah, you. we do thank, thank you, you, God. Thank you, thank we you. thank you that you are totally trustworthy. Mm. Yes, You God. are totally Good. trustworthy. That there's not a reason that we would have that that um, would, would cause us not to trust you. You are trustworthy in every circumstance of our life. And we give you all so much thanks for teaching us that you are not only trustworthy but you are the best teacher you teach our heart how to be content how to rest how to trust and we're forever thankful holy spirit that we have you to lead us into greater truths into greater riches in jesus name thank you lord yeah i just thank you holy spirit for what you're doing and i just pray god that if there's anyone that's watching that maybe feels the lord just convicting them or i you know i i love repentance because it's it's an invitation for us to live in more freedom mm-hmm. uh, so lord if there's anything that we need to repent of god for for lies that we've partnered with or ways we haven't trusted you lord i just pray you'd lead people watching into that and i just thank you god that we get to follow your culture uh, that you're our dream, God. We yeah. we don't want to just follow the American dream or yeah. American culture, but Lord, that you teach us yeah, your ways and your culture and how you want to lead us and what you think. And I just thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing and what you're going to do as people watch this. Just thank you, Holy Spirit. And I just pray lastly, just in whatever way, whatever way you lead us, mm-hmm. whatever way your voice is speaking to us individually, that you would give us pure hearts. We want, we want this area of money, just to to be touched by the fire of heaven, so that it's pure, it's lovely, it's good, it's it's holy. And so we ask, in whatever way that that needs to happen, that you would touch this area. So in no way is money an idol. Is money our God? Mm. Yes. Is money where our trust is? 
but that you would bring purity to this area. We're, we're asking you, Father, to do that and to speak to us in the ways yes. which only you know in Jesus' name. Yes, God. And for those of you that are thinking, you know, is this God? Should I step out and give it all? I say yes, go for it. You can trust him that he's got everything in his hands. And as you trust him with what you have and you give it all, he will multiply back unto you more than you can think, ask, or imagine. And so I also just pray as he multiplies back unto you that you keep an open hand always. Lord, our whole lives are surrendered to you. We have an open hand with everything you give us. It all belongs to you. And so we give you all the glory and the praise. We love you, Lord. We love you, God. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for awesome. having us. Of course, yeah. Thank you both. This was beautiful. It just really blessed me. I just feel like such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. as we've been talking. So, so good. Yeah. He is good. So good be blessed. Thank you all for joining us. God bless you. God bless you. Blessings. <laughs>